how's it going? Vasco here from the Angular University. And in this lesson, we're going to learn what is the relation between observables and the Angular 2 HTTP module. So it's coming right up. The relation between Angular 2 HTTP and observables is simple. The HTTP module always returns us observables. Every call that we make to it to retrieve data from the backend, to modify data on the backend, we get back an observable. Let's see this in action by doing our first Angular 2 HTTP call, now that we know how it works, how observables work. So we're going to call http.get and we're going to pass it in slash lessons. That's the URL of our backend that returns us a list of lessons that we've used before. But this time we are not using the fetch API, we are using Angular 2 HTTP. As usual with observables, we need to subscribe to this observable, otherwise nothing happens. So let's subscribe to this response observable and we're going to print out the output of its value to the screen. Let's see what this looks. You can see here that the output is of type response. So we can safely conclude that response dollar is an observable of type response. This type comes from the Angular 2 HTTP module. So you might have noticed here that we did not define any type for this response observable variable. This is implicitly inferred by the TypeScript compiler. TypeScript at this moment knows that this is an observable of type response. So if we would try to assign it to some other type, this would throw us an error. Let's draw a marble diagram for this observable so that we are sure what's going on. So we can see here that the response observable really does not emit any value until someone subscribes to it. Then it will call the backend and it will emit its single output value, the response, and then it will complete. Let's see this by adding an error handling and a completion handler function. To the subscription of this observable. If we now try this out, we can see that we get the response printed to the console and that afterwards the observable completes. So this is an important notion. Once a network observable created by Angular HTTP gets its value back, it will complete. This is important when combining multiple observables of this type. Now, let's consider this. We don't want to use the response most of the times, unless we want to check the status code or we want to read a response header from the HTTP response. Most of the times what we really want is the data. For that we do a map, so we use the map operator and we take the response and we call response.json on it, in a similar way to what happened while using the fetch API. This will create an observable that will have as value the response data that we got from the server. So if we output its value to the screen, we get here the lessons data as expected. So now we know how the Angular 2 HTTP module relates to observables. It returns observables. But now, how can we use this information in order to build our service layer? How should we use this? It's coming right up in the next lesson.